Hello and welcome to the Blue Valley North Library Media Center website. Today we're going to talk about using Desmos.com as a graphing calculator online for the Algebra 2 Parabola project. This is going to be a pretty technical video so you'll need to pay attention and watch carefully. You'll also need to re-watch and rewind many times in order to make sure you complete this project properly. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open a new tab and we're going to a website called Desmos.com, D-E-S-M-O-S.com. When you get there, you can see that it looks like this, and Desmos.com has an excellent graphing calculator. So we're going to click on the red Launch Calculator button. The thing that's really nice about the Desmos graphing calculator is that it does everything that your graphing calculator does, um, except kind of some of the functions like uh, getting your own regressions or making lists, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating an account. I'm already logged into my account, but what you'll do is you will click on create account. You'll use your email address with your name and a password, and then you'll create your account. And it's very easy. So I'm going to go ahead and sign back in using my email address. And the reason why you're going to want to create the account is because this allows you to save your graph. The important thing about saving your graph is because if you don't get it done in class, you can work on it anywhere. You don't need any special software. You just need to be able to access the internet, which is one of the great features of Desmos. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add our picture that you took of a parabola somewhere out in the real world. And the way that you're going to do that is click on the plus over here, and you'll see that image is one of your choices. So we're going to add an image. I'm going to browse in my computer to where I have my image saved and I'm going to open it. So here's my image. It is of a um, banner hanging in the library and since it's hanging I tried to take my picture as straight on as I could and you'll notice that Desmos does center the picture for you. So it's already centered. However, if you need to move it off-center um, or if your picture doesn't have the vertex right in the middle at zero zero then you can click on this center dot and click and drag and that'll move your picture around. If you want to make your picture bigger, which I actually do a little bit, I think I want to make mine a little bigger, you can pick on any of the corners and that will scale your picture up. And I'm going to scale mine to about right there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my um, scale my settings to make my graph the most like what my calculator is going to look like. So I'm going to click over here on the little tool and that's going to let me change my axes and my steps, meaning um, what it's counting by. I want to make sure that the x-axis is 10, 10, negative 10 to 10 and I want to make the y-axis the same. So I'm going to make that negative 10 to 10 just by clicking on those um, boxes and entering the number. I also want my step for each of these to to be one. Then I'll just click out and this is what my picture looks like. So that looks pretty good. That's how I want it to work. Now the reason why we changed the scale is because you are going to next select points for your parabola. So I'm going to look along my graph and make sure that the line that I have as my parabola meets up with these points. And you know I'm actually going to change this a little bit. It doesn't really look like my graph has the my min or my vertex at zero zero and that's where I want mine to be. You don't have to have your vertex at zero zero for my picture it makes sense and I'm using the line that's holding these things together so you can see that line. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little smaller too. Uh, actually I want it to be right about there. That looks pretty good for me. So now that I have my picture set up the way that I want and my scale is set up the way that I want, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look very carefully at my parabola in my picture and I am going to pick at least 10 points. I'm going to plot those points so that I can get the quadratic regression for my graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is start using all the points and the way that you're going to enter them is by clicking over here. You'll use your parentheses and your end, you'll enter your points. Now I have mine um, written down for what I want to use and it's going to go ahead and put a little dot at each one of my points which I like and then I'll just go to the next one and I'm going to use 3.5 
3 and 0.25. The reason why you want to have at least 10 points is the more points you have, the more accurate your regression is going to be. Also, the reason why we changed our scale to be what it is is because that allows you to use quarters even to um, get your points. So for example, I just entered the point 3.25. So if I go to 3.25, it's right there at that intersection. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep entering my points. So hold on just a minute. So as I finish entering my points, you can see that all I really have to do is click out of my parentheses, open a new parentheses, and type in the number. I do have numbers that are both on the right side of the y-axis and the left side of the y-axis. And I ended up with 11 points that I was comfortable with. And you'll notice some of them are pretty specific. For example, here's 6.5, 1.5, 3.75, 0 0.5, and this is my whole list of points. When I click out here, they'll all show up on my graph. And I did learn that all of your points do have to be separated by a comma. So in between the points, you have to have a comma for them to show up on this graph. If for some reason you forget that, you'll get a yellow triangle over here and Desmos will tell you, I don't understand this. So you'll just put those commas between your points and then they'll all be listed on your graph. So I'm gonna put this over to the left a little bit so we can see all of my points on my graph. And it looks like I did a pretty good job of picking points that are gonna be on that graph. Then the next step is to type those points into list one on your calculator. So this is obviously not a part that I can show you in the video, but on my calculator, I went to stat edit and I entered all of these points into list one and list two, the X value in list one and the Y value in list two. Then on my calculator, I'm gonna to go to stat, calc, and choose a quadratic regression, which is choice five. I'll make sure that the X list is pulling from L1, the Y list is pulling from L2. And then one thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna store my equation in Y1, and we'll talk about how to do that in class. And as I choose calculate, my calculator gives me the quadratic regression for my uh, points that I've picked. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to add in Desmos up here in the left, I'm going to click on that plus, so I'm going to choose expression. And I'm going to type in my y equals and there is my equation. I had it copied and pasted. And I went ahead and used all of the decimals that my calculator gave me. And the reason why I did that is because the more decimals you include here, the better your picture is going to look. And now if you look at Desmos, it put in that blue line for me, which goes right along my parabola. And it looks pretty nice. So now I have my picture with my points and the equation of my line and the line graphed in Desmos. So the next step is to use the snipping tool which all Windows 7 computers have. You're going to click down here on the start menu. You're going to use the snip tool and the snip tool grays out your whole screen and gives you this plus sign cursor. This plus sign cursor will allow you to click and drag around your picture and it turns it into just a picture. So I took a snip of my screen and what I can do then is go to PowerPoint and I can paste this into one of my PowerPoint slides. So I'll open up PowerPoint and even though I'm going to put other slides here I'm going to go ahead and paste and my picture will go there and I will format it so it fits onto a PowerPoint slide. Another good idea is to go back to the snip tool and save this snip into your folder, into your math folder, so that you have it for later use. And I already have this saved, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel. So I've got my snip and I've got it inserted into my PowerPoint. Now what you will do is you will make a PowerPoint according to the rubric, which we have already discussed, and when your PowerPoint is done, you'll upload it into BrainShark, which is the next video. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. We'll be happy to help you, and good luck graphing!